How's it going, everybody? Rye Brad here today, and we are back with our Philadelphia Flyers franchise mode here, halfway through the 25-26 season, and we are ready to get it underway. We had a pretty good last episode. Um, we're currently sitting in a playoff spot. But before we get started, guys, I know I'm now starting to play like a game per episode, and we look likely we're that we're going to make the playoffs. How do you guys want to see that in the playoffs? Do you want to see me only jump in during elimination games, only for the third period? Uh, do you want to see me not jump in at all, not to mess anything? Because I, I want to show gameplay because I'm enjoying NHL 23 a lot as far as the gameplay is concerned. Um, but I want to know how you guys want me to do the playoffs so that I don't alter the universe too much and just win it just because I'm playing. Uh, but as we saw, I can clearly lose a game uh, when we play in the last one. But here we go, guys. Now that that question is asked, and you guys can let me know in the comment section, you guys can see here, Joel Fairby in the last one was so annoying. But he leads the team in points. <laughs> so maybe it's justified. But we are on sitting on 42 points. We are 20-11-2 with a game in hand on the Capitals. We could pull to within one point behind them. If we take a look at the lines, what we jumbled up last episode, we've got Konechny, Couturier, Faraby, no longer with Halton and getting the plus five, but he's now getting a plus one. He was a minus four. He's only got 20 points in 30, which is definitely not bad, but I'd like to see him improve a bit. But he's playing with Druin and Frost on the second line, getting a plus one. We've got Brink with Lehman and Hayes uh, getting a plus one there. And then Paling with Dubois and Tippett. Uh, and this fourth line has been fantastic. We signed Dubois hopefully to be that third liner for us, that power forward. He, he's been really, really good. Hasn't really complained about his ice time, which has been nice. You can see everybody's kind of playing in a role that suits them. The third line forwards on the fourth line is is okay. Uh, we got two second line forwards here, a depth forward and Halton in. Uh, and then we got Konechny as a second liner, Kachiri as a first liner, but Faraby also as a second liner. But hopefully this is the season he really breaks out. He's on pace to absolutely obliterate his points total uh, from last year. Defensively, though, we've got Korchinski at an 83, looking really good. Like that trade uh, last year, we gave up Tony D'Angelo. And I remember that trade got a little bit of backlash. But, you know, from my perspective as the Philadelphia GM, I understand the look of my team. Maybe it wouldn't happen in real life for their own GM. But as me, as the GM, I would look to the future here. Uh, and I think that uh, Chicago got the benefit of that trade, too. Uh, Cam York and Ristolainen continue to be an okay third pairing. Uh, Jet who actually turning into something has been phenomenal for us. And then we got Carter Hart and Her Hunter Jones. I almost called him Herbert Jones. Um, yeah, so he needs to step up his game. Scratch, we've got Ratcliffe, Ellis, and Holmstrom. Ellis, buddy, just, just hang it up, please. <laughs> I don't want to pay you $6.1 million for another year. Like, uh, oh, that's just going to hurt. Uh, and this team has kind of strapped me from doing anything kind of crazy or exciting uh, simply because of our cap situation. Now, we have $10.6 in cap space this season. And then expiring is Kevin Hayes' $7 million. Everybody, round of applause. Uh, hooray in the chat <laughs> uh, for Kevin Hayes' contract finally coming to an end. And honestly, I can't say it's been all that bad. $7 million for what he's given us hasn't been great. But, you know, 52 points, 52 points, 36. He has started to tail off, but he's getting less and less ice time. So this season, he's been solid for us, and I will take that. Uh, but Owen Tippett is the next guy at $2.8 million. Holmstrom, who's been scratched. Wu, who's been playing for us. Maybe we want to look at what a contract extension for Wu would look like. Uh, give him a one-year deal, 1.35, I'll give it to him. He's an easily scratchable uh, defenseman if we want to use that $20 million in cap space. So I will actually sign uh, sign him to that contract because he fits the scheme on the second pairing. I'm pretty happy with that. Nobody else here really looks too concerning that I want to jump on right now as far as contracts. I think we'll let the rest of them go. And then as far as goaltenders are concerned, we don't really have any anything expiring. So we are getting out of this cap hell that we were put in. And we're starting to turn the corner here for players that I think, you know, Haltonen is going to be good. Lehman's going to be good. They've got those X factors. Couturier is starting to get to the tail end of his career. So if we can get him a, a, a cup or a shot at a cup, I mean, he's got five years left on that $7.6 million deal. So he's going to be playing until he's 38. Um, but we're starting to get into a spot where I think this franchise is going to get really exciting. And I know you guys have been asking me to do the Honolulu Hammerheads. They will be coming this year. So stay tuned to that. But we, I want to finish out this Philadelphia Flyers franchise mode. I want to do it justice. Um, and actually follow through with this Philadelphia Flyers one. This has been enjoyable for me. Uh, I think I've made some really exciting moves. Uh, and I think we just are about, to, we're on the cusp, right? Uh, but anyway, this New York Islanders game seems to be the most important one. They are at the top of the division there. And I think playing them and getting a win here would be huge. So this is the one I'm going to simulate up to and play. 
Uh, we get a trade offer for Druin. I'm not going to trade away Druin. He's a good second liner for us. I'm happy with it. Jet Wu extended his contract, and we win a shootout there. Wow. I don't know why Druin is on the block, but there we go. Another win against the Florida Panthers. Against the Rangers is huge. Back-to-back -back wins. Uh, well, best lines it down in the AHL. Why not? Against Buffalo, we win. There we go. This is a big one. Against Pittsburgh, we win. Against Toronto, we win. I don't care if it's in a shootout. We won. Against the Detroit Red Wings, we win as well. And against the Dallas Stars, we win. Let's go. All right. Um, and we are now, look at that, look at that. We are three points behind the Islanders with two games against the Islanders in the span of seven days. This is going to be huge, guys. This game against the New York Islanders coming up is a massive one. Sean Couturier has overtaken the lead in points and now has 37 points in 44. So... Maybe moving Faraby up was the move. Uh, we started the month slowly, right? But uh, uh, what are we at? We had two losses, and that's two wins, four wins, six wins, eight wins, nine, two, and nine, nine and two, nine and two to start the 2026. Happy New Year, everybody. I got to wish you a happy new year in real life, but happy new year to the Philadelphia Flyers in 2026. Here we go. This is the game we're jumping into, though, guys. So let's go ahead. Simulate it. Yes, we're going to do the first two periods. You guys know how it goes. Period one, it's one to one with Druin and Lekin. In period two, it's one to one. Okay. So we now have the opportunity to take uh, a real good shot at the division lead. Um, you can see there's Halton in number 18 as well uh, as Bartzell on the screen. So we'll jump into it here, guys, real quick. Again, Style is custom only because of the injuries, uh, but all-star, three-minute length, no on-ice trainer, and we jump into it. And I love the fact that I don't have to edit this because it's going to load so quickly. It's amazing. And here we go, third period. I was waiting for the uh, intro animation for the game, um, but we are going to lose the face-off there. That's a bummer. Oh, we got a little bit of a hut set up here with our, our wingers. Um, I'm not sure. Ooh, Couturier. Can we get there? Can we get there? We can. He shoots. Ooh. Ah, oh, man. I didn't have much room to make a move because of uh, Bartzell being right on top of him. There we go. Big hit. Brown is going to get hit again. Bartzell with his elite edges. Beauvillier. Nice connect knee. Korchinski now. Korchinski. Skate with it. Skate with it. We'll go over to Faraby. Over to Couturier. Couturier. We'll dangle in tight. Oh, I thought I had it there. Uh, we'll go to Faraby. Faraby back to the point to Korchinski. Down to Faraby. Faraby. Gets, there we go. It's going to keep working. Work the cycle. There we go. Over to Provorov. We'll go back to Korchinski. Korchinski to Couturier. We'll go down to, down low. Faraby. Ah, we couldn't get it there. Good read by Pellick. Beauvillier. There we go. We stop him at the blue line. He's not going to be able to get it out. Dubé is still there. Pellick now is going to be able to find Nelson, and they get out. But can we get it? Good body check. He's just going to have to dump it. Korchinski. There we go. Good pickup. Over to Faraby, we go across the ice to Druin. Nope, I wanted to go to Couturier, uh, but it switched me to uh, Druin. There we go, now we can get it to Druin. Druin is in, Druin, around, in tight. Faraby was there, but he couldn't pick up the loose puck. And now Dubé skates it away. Beauvillier now with the puck, takes the shot, but it's blocked. Woo, good block. There we go. Uh, can we go back to Provorov? There we go, we'll go into Druin. There we go, can we get it in? We'll go down and around. Frost. Work on it. There we go. Down low. He takes the body check. Dobson. He's been on fire this season, hasn't he? In real life. Beauvillier, though, unable to get it in the zone. We'll go up to Frost. Frost. Ah, we can't quite get it. Halton with a good poke, though. Uh, but Beauvillier does pick it up. Nobody else is there to pick it up. K Akasha. Drew in now. Drew in with the toe drag. Drew in. Can he get in? Two toe drags in a row. Drew in. Oh, we just couldn't feed it past Matt Murray, who's now an, a New York Islander. We'll take the slap shot. Oh, hey, he's almost tried to bat that out of midair. Couldn't get it. Uh, now Kasha. Andre Kasha skating around with it. Finds Arturi Lekkinen. Lekkinen. Ooh, skates in. He's got a two-on-one. We're going to attack. He's going to go. There we go. Good back check by Frost. Now Hayes with the puck. Hayes gets around his man. Hayes powers to the front of the net. Goes in tight. And Kevin Hayes scores the goal. We have a 2-1 lead. That's his eighth of the season. A little power move to the front of the net. And Kevin Hayes gets your Philadelphia Flyers a 2-1 lead. Look at this. He's going to skate in. He protects the puck. Goes around Romanov and tucks it in on the backhand past Matt Murray, baby. All right. Um, and we are, uh, uh, we'll accept the lockdown defense. We'll, we'll accept it. Why not? We're up 2-1 with five minutes to go in the period. We're going to play it smart. Lehman now on the draw is going to win it. There we go. Woo. Goes to Sandheim. Up to Lehman. Over to Hayes. Hayes gets in. Hayes 
Gets around his man again. Hayes. Oh, why is it passing it? No, I didn't want to pass it there. Oh, man. But Hayes on the four check. We get, get around him. He's on the back door. Lehman. Oh, Hayes with the bat out of the air. Can't get it. Oh, we'll go back down and around. Here we go. Get. Yes, Lehman. Work the. Yes, Bobby Brink picks it up. Oh, we are unable to get around with that. Kout. Here we go. Good step. Can we just pass it? There we go. Korchinski now with puck possession. We'll go up. Over to Bobby Brink. Bobby Brink misses the pass. How does Bobby Brink not pick that up? Come on. Lehman. Uh, Zach Aston Reese dumps it in deep. Sandheim. This is Flyers hockey, boys. Uh, or uh, I should say this is, uh, well, it is Flyers hockey. Uh, but Lehman now. Lehman gets in. Lehman. There's a man on the back door. Oh, he can't. He misses it again. Oh, my God. Lehman now. Lehman around his man. Ah, we can't cut to the front of the net. I want to do another power move with Lehman there. Uh, Korchinski will go back to Sandheim. Sandheim up to tip it. Tip it. Can we get it in? No, we can't get it deep. I was just going to try and dump that thing deep, and now comes Bartzell. One-on-one -on -one with Korchinski. They're going to pull the goalie with 30 seconds to go. We're going to go up. Lehman finding Tippett. Tippett. Can we get it to Korchinski? Korchinski. He's in. Korchinski is going to shoot and score. And whew, All right, Korchinski getting the goal. Um, I almost overplayed that, um, but we got in tight. Maybe should have shot it sooner, but whatever. We get the empty net goal, and it is three to one. Ooh, look at that! Konechny ninth in hits in the league. Wait, wait, Konechny ninth in hits? Okay, uh, I was not expecting to see hits as the leaderboard. I thought we were gonna get points as the leaderboard, but uh, okay. Uh, Pulak, they find Dubé. Dubé gets it in. Farabee, Joel Farabee, race to the goal, and we're gonna just go ahead and put that thing in, and Farabee. Continues this hot season uh, with another empty netter. It's going to be 4-1, two empty netters. You know what? We're, we're stat pad. Jonathan Druin gets another point. There we go. Moves above PLD. Uh, I'll take that because Druin is the second liner. And Pierre-Luc Dubois is a fourth liner. But hey, it uh, just goes to show you that our fourth line is is working. It's clicking. And then the signing was pretty good. Konechny gets in. Konechny around his man. All right. We'll go uh, just take a shot. Because the game is over. All right. Sorry, I'm not paying much attention to the clock because I'm trying to commentate and play here. But a 4-1 victory. Couturier is the third star of the game. The second star of the game is Joel Faraby with his empty net goal and three hits. Uh, beats his man there. Pelic just doesn't have the speed. Uh, and we skate that thing in and shoot. I that almost blew that too. Um, that would have been a very, very bad highlight. And the first star of the game is Kevin Hayes with a goal and one hit. The go-ahead game-winning goal. You can see he powers to the front of the net here and gets it just around him on the backhand. Beautiful. All right. You know what? That was fun. I'm enjoying playing this year, guys. So thank you guys for in the comments suggesting that I play because that was a lot of fun. Uh, but here we go. Time, recent individual, we just we just beat the best team in our division and we're now one point behind him. All right, uh, we gotta get up to the trade deadline here um, against Vancouver. Carter Hart has been injured with a swollen knee. He's gonna be out um, just a few, just about a week or so. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but definitely don't like seeing my uh, goalies <laughs> uh, getting swollen knees. Uh, we will go ahead and edit our lines in the NHL. Hunter Jones is gonna have to hold it down with Logan Thompson uh, backing him up. Hunt, uh, Hunter, yeah, it is Hunter Jones. God, I want to I want to call him Herbert. I don't know why. Um, Logan Thompson, though, our former backup, uh, will best lines it down in the AHL. Samuel Erson gets the starting gig. And Vancouver, ooh, 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 ooh. wait, 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 wait. We have to stop the sim. We're looking at the AHL schedule. Uh, Jonathan Druin for Mario Ferraro. No, I like Druin. Thank you, though. Um, we'll back out here because we went down to the AHL. Uh, and there we go. So we beat Buffalo, but we lose to St. Louis. How do we do against Vancouver? Uh, where you lose to Vancouver as well. We definitely want Carter Hart back sooner rather than later. Make that push. This is a big game against the Islanders again. What's going to happen in it? We are going to win 5-3. to three. We have now taken the division lead. I know they have a game in hand, but we've taken the division lead. All right. Carter Hart is able to return to the lineup and will now count. So we'll go to goalies. Thank you, Jones, or, or Thompson, for your service. I don't know if you even played uh, at NHL lines. I'm not best lining it. Good God, no. I I spent too much time on these lines. Um, Flip-flop that and then put Carter Hart in as the starter. And the good news is we I think it's like an Olympic break here. I don't know. We have a long time off. Um, we lose 2-1 to one against Detroit. 
That's okay, though. Can we bounce back? We can't bounce back against Columbus. Uh, Detroit now wants to offer us front. Ooh, three-game losing streak. Let's, uh, four game. Buffalo Sabres have fired Vyacheslav Samsonov, their head coach. Oh, my God. A four-game, five-game losing streak. We did get a point, but we do snap it there with an overtime win against Washington. Beautiful three wins. We're a bit streaky, aren't we? Uh, win there. Jonathan Drew in. I am sorry for how I am playing out there. Um, I have a 50-50 shot. I think I'm going to take it. Uh, Jonathan Drouin is appreciating the vote of confidence. I believe in you, Jonathan. I don't want to trade you at the deadline. Uh, teams are calling about you, but don't, don't let that get to your head. You're, you're fine. Nope. I'm not going to trade you. You're not, you're, you're safe. You know what else is safe right now? Our lead in the division, even with a game in hand, we are still two points above the Islanders if they would win it. Uh, Sean Couturier now is almost looking like he's going to be a point-per-game player. And is that the, is this going to be the first time he's been point-per-game in this series? Um, yeah, no, he's he's on, on pace for a new high. Holy smokes. All right, Joel Farabee cooling off a bit, but still has 20 goals, 45 points and 61. He's on pace for mid-60s in points. Same thing with Travis Konechny. Things we love to see. He's now up to an 86 overall. Okay. Uh, Halton in with 36 points, 18 goals. He's a minus six, though. Drewin's a minus eight. Frost is a minus four. Um, so that second line is a minus, but Provorov, wow. Okay, look at Provorov. But uh, as we get to the deadline, I just want to take a look at some players, how we're doing, what might we need. Uh, Bobby Brink's not doing well. Um, 21 points and 61. I thought he was going to be so good. He's up to an 84. He's up to an 84 and his underlying stats look amazing except for the defensive awareness. Uh, but everybody else is kind of clicking, right? Frost, Druin, Halton, and they need to pick up their plus minus. The top six, maybe we uh, kind of maybe want to go after a defenseman. We don't have a lot of cap space, though. But to go after a defensive defenseman, I mean, I think Jet Wu is a defensive defenseman, right? Uh, but we could we might be able to upgrade on Jet Wu. I know I brought him back. He's kind of the the seventh defenseman of next year. Uh, I'd hope to get somebody better. Ristolainen's contract has got one more year after this one. Let's go. We're almost out of that one too. Cam York has been a little disappointing. I thought Cam York was going to be a defenseman of the future for us, but it's now Korchinski who is pairing so phenomenally with uh, Provorov, Sanheim, and Wu. Well, Sanheim doing better than Wu is. Um, and then Korchinski or York and Ristolainen. Okay. So maybe a defensive defenseman. Um, and then look at that Herbert Jones or Hunter, Hunter Jones bouncing back very significantly here in his, in his little stretch as a starter, uh, really improved his save percentage and goal against average, but we are riding Carter hard. He is absolutely carrying rookie skaters is just Lehman and woo. Halton is not a rookie. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's something about games played in the AHL. I, I don't know. Um, why he wouldn't be a rookie, but Lehman would be. Uh, but we are here uh, ready to go. And I think contract wise, we don't really have any expiring guys um, that we want to move on from. I don't think it's real, re really realistic to trade Jonathan Drew in. I mean, he's been fine for us. He's my actually a minus eight, but he's got points. We'll see. We'll see what's out there. I think if I want to target something, it is a top four defensive defenseman. Those are hard to come by. Um, we want to be a buyer. I'm, I'm going in this season. Enter the trade deadline. I think this is a season where we can make a serious push. Uh, and Patrick Line is available. That would be insane. What would it take to get Patrick Line on the team? It would take two firsts in Daigle or Kozlov a first and a second. Okay. Probably not going to get him. Philip Heedle is an RFA or a UFA, RFA, I guess, that just never got signed. Um, let's take a look at uh, not the top 10 players, just the available players. Uh, John Carlson would be a phenomenal defender to go after, but can we get him? It would take Pierre-Luc Dubois a second and a third, Bobby Brink a second and a third, Frost, and then, oh, yeah, let me just give you Carter Hart straight up. And Bill, yeah, no. So it doesn't look like we're going to be going after um, John Carlson as much as I'd love to, 87 overall with the X Factor. Um, it's just it's just not meant to be. Jesper Wallstead is on the are you serious? They probably not they maybe don't want to pay him. Oh, and I don't want do not want Lind Holmes five year contract. Um, what else do we got here? Grizzlick, five years on that one. Um, Adrian Kempe, nope, nope. Heronic, the defender. Oh, we have an offer. Max Domi, uh, Tan and Tanev for our first and second. This no. I'm not giving up both my first and second. Uh, if we take a look at what picks that we have we'll uh look here i know our first are on the blocks but uh we have a first second third we finally have all of all of our picks here our pick is looking pretty uh poor so it wouldn't be terrible to get rid of that but i still think we need to keep we don't have like a pipeline where i feel good enough about moving player uh moving picks yet uh shane gosh is bear the offensive defenseman uh we could take a look at it uh there is a trade to, to be announced we have got kavsha and a first to the kings for anderson a third and a seventh 
Okay. Uh, I don't understand the point of that deal, but you know what? I'm not privy to that information. Holmstrom, a second and a third. Bring back Gosh's beer. There we go. Um, Gavin, a third and a fourth. Pierre-Luc Dubois in a third or two seconds. I almost like the Holmstrom a second and a third, but that's second and a third this year. Third and a fourth this year. Gavin, though. I think Gavin, do we just draft him, what, in the first round? Jordan Gavin? Yeah, he was our ninth overall pick. Oh, forget my uh, trade offer. Buchnevich, Bear, Mayfield, and a, whoa. Carolina, what is this trade? Give up our first next year and our medium elite goaltender, Kozlov, who's 20 and 70. For Buchnevich, who's got six years, he's an X Factor, he's 30. He looks so insane. Um, 42 points. He's would, would he fit the scheme? He'd fit the second line. Could be a great second liner. Ethan Bear, uh, two way defender here, 83 overall. He would fit our second pairing, as well as Scott Mayfield, a defensive defenseman that I've been looking for, also fits the second pairing and a third. Holy smokes. I don't think Buchnevich is worth 9.4 million. Uh, 87 overall. With He's got the X factors. It's nice and all, but he's, he looks really good, but not six years at 9 million at 30. I'm going to have to decline that trade. That was a very, I, I, they almost got me there. I almost did that one, but I am not going to do that one. Um, John Klingberg's offensive defenseman. Uh, let's see. Anybody, any other defenseman here? Malkin, uh, Strom. Uh, they're looking for a first round pick for Dylan Strom. I don't need any forwards, but I was just curious what they would, what they would take. Same similar value. So I've seen that those couple packages before, same value. Um, so, uh, we, we know what it would take. Uh, he's not signed. Jacob Bernard Docker, not signed. Clefbaum signed for four more years. We get another trade offer. It's Kozlov and a first for Klingberg and Schmaltz, uh, and a third. I think I'm going to decline this trade because it's our first this year. Klingberg is definitely aging. He's an offensive defenseman, so it would be tougher to pair him with people. Uh, Klingberg's an 85 to offensive defenseman at 33. He's probably going to be dropping off. He's not played well this year on the Coyotes. I know nobody has looking at their record, but still, um, I don't think it's one that I want to go after. I'd much rather get like a solid two-way defenseman or a good uh, defensive defenseman. The Blue Jackets traded Evans, Tarasov, and a fourth, and Merrill to the Boston Bruins in exchange for a second, Graves, and a third. Okay, uh, pretty interesting. I don't want to really go too much lower as far as overall. There's Mario Ferraro, who's a two-way defenseman. Um, there is Dylan Coughlin, who's in uh, 83, one year left on his deal. Uh, Ethan Bear. Now let's look at, let's look at Dylan Coughlin. Um, it would take a second and a third for him. Okay. There's some guys in that 83 range though, that, that I might want to go after. Um, <laughs> please don't EA, please fix that. Uh, Strom and Goss is bear to the, go to the Ducks, So they go, uh, wow. Uh, for Bjorkstrand, Vorbiev in a second. So the, um, capitals are selling. All right. Mario Ferraro. They want a second and a third or Jet Wu or Cam York or Gavin. Um, Wu for, I don't know if I want to give up Wu. He's signed for next year. Mario Ferraro, uh, left-handed two-way defenseman. He fits on our third pairing. That'd be okay, I guess. Doesn't look very good statistics-wise. He's pretty good defensively, to be honest. Uh, minus 13 is not what I like to see. Um, but he is playing on the Sharks. He's getting 22 minutes a night, which is pretty pretty big. He does get a lot of blocks and shots. His giveaway to takeaway ratio is very, very poor, though. Um, so I'm going to decline that trade. Let's go ahead and take one final look at Ethan Bear. we got a couple hours left in the trade deadline. I went a little far there. Ethan Bear uh, from the Carolina Hurricanes, a second and a third. We'll see. It's probably not worth it, but we'll take a look at him. He's an 83, 28. He is a plus. He's getting another 22 minutes a night. Looks you know, a perfect two-way defenseman fits our second pairing. So he's an upgrade over Wu. Um, I just, Oh, I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. Ethan bear, um, 11 points plus two. He's not a very high point getter. Uh, his good way to take away ratio is slightly better, uh, than Mario Ferraro's two to one. No, not really. Um, <laughs> you guys can see here, he's having a little bit of a down season. Uh, his hits and blocks though are very, very nice to see. Um, we get another offer, a first and a second for Mario Ferraro. No, I no, <laughs> straight up no. Um, oh good, this oh, it didn't it didn't cancel out the trade. Thank God. Um, but I don't think a second and a third would be worthwhile. I think if anything, a goalie prospect like Kozlov, although Kozlov seems to have a good amount of value, he really does. Uh, oh my God, that would be an overpayment to give that. Wow, Kozlov. Okay, 
Okay, Kozlov, uh, maybe I'm sleeping on you, man. 70 overall, 20, medium elite. Okay. Um, skaters matching the block. The uh, Florida Panthers made a trade. A second, a third, and Edwards to the Sharks for Mario Ferraro and Skinner, so they're going to stop offering him to me. Um, I do like to see our, our skaters that are matching the block. Guys like Virgilio and Gavin. Virgilio was our 15th overall pick. Um... Uh, this past season in 2002 oh, seasons ago in 24 Gavin was our first round pick in 2025 um they're both looking like they're on their way up I'll I'll let them marinate down there <laughs> without a contract um they don't really want anybody else for Ethan Bear so I think I'm gonna put that one on hold Bucinevich, yeah it's an insane contract I don't think I'm gonna offer anything for that uh Bjorkstrand could be cool to have but again I really think just defensemen um but there's really no defensemen that fit the need um, and the asking price. Um, nothing I could find. Coglin, maybe. Wait, did the, did they just trade for Coglin? I feel like he wasn't a Carolina Hurricane. Um, did they just trade for him? No, there's no way, right? There's no way they just traded for him. Oh, we got a trade offer. It's Neckish, Bear, and Walker for two firsts and Virgilio. Wow, okay. Um, an 85 exact elite Neckish who doesn't fit our scheme. No thanks. I'm going to exit that trade. Oh, man. And, of course, because, because the same team offered me a trade, uh, it's going to cancel out my other one. But Coughlin here. I, I swear he wasn't on the Hurricanes. Uh, we're going to edit the trade, though. I kind of liked Coughlin, though. Uh, potentially. Maybe. I don't know. He's not very good offensively. Fits the second pairing, though. Let's see his stats. Playing for Carolina. No, he has played for Carolina all season. Uh, doesn't take a lot of pims. Shoots an average amount. Uh, hits blocks. Not as much as Bear. Uh, gives the puck away way more than Bear. Uh, Right-handed defenseman, though, could be useful. Um, mm, let's see. He's very, very good defensively. That is a great defensive category. Uh, physicality is there. Offense is not, though. And he does fit the, the second pairing, though. Is it worth a second and a third for that? I don't think so. I think it's worth to have the picks rather than um, anything else. I mean, let's take a look at our, our stat central here. Uh, the standings. Right, we're gonna be, we're we're a top team, I think, in the entire league. How, where are we? So we're sixth in the entire league. We're we're the best in our division. There's a couple teams in the Atlantic. It seems like Ottawa and Montreal, um, and then in the Central we got Colorado and Dallas. Um, but I'll I'll take it for right now. I mean, 64 and a half percent point percentage uh, is pretty darn good. Um, the Detroit Red Wings have made a trade. Uh, Hronik to the Canucks for Brock Besser. Brock Besser on the move. The Canucks dropped him. Okay. Um, and is it worth it to look at the 82s? I don't think they're going to be enough of an upgrade. Um, Jamie Alexiak, the defensive defenseman. No trades found. That's a bummer. I mean, I could make my own. Um, okay. And we get to the 81s now, which are not an upgrade at all. Um, yeah, we really don't. Okay. Maybe, maybe we look at Alexiak. How, how about that? Take a look at Jamie Alexiak here. Um, does he fit the scheme? He fits the defensive pairing too. Really, really good defensive defenseman. But we kind of have the similar kind of guy in Jet Wu, although not 6'7". Um, the giveaway to takeaway ratio is horrific. That is awful. But the hits and blocks are insane. Um, taking a look. Let, let, we'll just compare him to Jet Wu here real quick. Um, Jet Wu, throw him on the block there. Um, and you can see that Jet Wu... Very similar player, not a lot of points, not a lot of plus minuses. Uh, giveaway to takeaway ratio is also bad, but also hits and blocks. And just taking a look at you know his 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 stats here, like you flip between the two. Jet Wu's slightly better defensively, slightly worse offensively. Um, he's a better skater. Um, he's incredible. Oh he's the most aggressive player in the league. Ninety eight aggressiveness, ninety seven body checking, ninety five strength. He's hitting the gym. Um, wow. Okay, Jet Wu. <laughs> um, and yeah, so they're 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 too comparable for me to say that um, this is a trade that I'd want to do. So I'm gonna actually just it's gonna be a quiet deadline. We're not gonna do anything. Um, maybe you guys wanted to see me do something there. Maybe one of those trades piqued your interest. Uh, but Line A goes to Columbus. Oh no, goes to Calgary for a first. Brindamore and Shishkinov, uh, peak also part of the deal. Okay, that's a big trade, and that's another guy out of our division, Line. A. They did stock up for the future of the Blue Jackets, but they are, I mean, we're pretty much safe in the playoffs right now with 80 points. So, like I said at the beginning of the, the video, guys, how do you guys want me to do the playing games in the uh, in the playoffs, just because it's so different? Casper um, Halton has broken his wrist. 
Casper Haltonen broke his wrist. Bobby Brink, um, no, okay, Pierre-Luc Dubois, we got a plus one. Okay, Dubois has earned it. He's going to go up on that top line. Um, who takes better face-offs? Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, wow, is so much, wow, Frost is really bad. Uh, he's not really bad defensively, but he is pretty bad defensively. Uh, and then here we will throw in Holmstrom. Um, Flip-flop him with Paling because Paling can play center. Oh, and tip it. There we go. All right. So Bobby Brink may be up here. No, we're going to leave it as is. And then Hayes up. No. Okay. So Pierre-Luc Dubois, perfect second liner for us there. I'm um, pretty happy with that. The power play does need to get somebody replaced on it. Um, he was... Uh, okay. So Halton was on this power play here. Uh, it's Konechny, Couturier, Druin, Provorov on the power play line too. Is Farabee, Frost, Bobby Brink... Um, you know what? Maybe we give, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois a little bit, uh, all the ice time, right? Um, just because he's been good. <laughs> he's been very good. He's getting now first line power play time. Uh, we'll take a look at power play. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can probably just easily do this one. Sanheim, Korchinski, Druin, Frost, and we got Kachurier, Konechny, and we need Faraby because I didn't read Faraby's name there. He's a left winger. Faraby substitute him in there. And there we go. We should be all set. Um, and now Pierre-Luc Dubois is going to love his ice time. We'll stop the sim because we jumped ahead to June. Uh, we did lose the Detroit Red Wings, who we keep losing to. And I don't like that because they're a very bad team. Uh, but we'll simulate to the last three games of the season here. Um, the Devils, we do beat them. And we, lose it. we get a point against Toronto, which is okay against Florida. We're going to lose that one. We bounce back with back-to-back -back wins, though. Three straight wins. Carter Hart broke his toe and will be out until May 4th. Oh my, we're going to have to play the first round of the playoffs without Carter Hart. Starter Hart. Oh no, oh that's not good, that's that's really not good. <laughs> uh, Carter Hart was a huge piece of this team and for him to break his toe right now, oh man. All right, Hunter Jones, I'll get your name right if you can win us a few games here down the stretch. Uh, we are 45, 46 wins against Seattle. We win 5 nothing, a shutout win. Beautiful. Okay, against the Islanders, we win. Beautiful. All right, and we have officially clinched a playoff spot uh, with 102 points. We're still in for a shout, in with a shout um, for the best record in the East uh, against the Senator. Oh, God, that game at the end of the season might come down to who wins the East. That's crazy. Boston, we win. The Islanders, we lose in a We pick up a point. We pick up a point. And we are at 105. The Senators are at 106. We have clinched the division. It comes down to this game here for the winner of the East, not the President's Trophy. The Stars have officially clinched the President's Trophy. Uh, but we could win the East. I will, I'm not going to jump into this one. I'm not going to jump in. Um, but I want I want to kind of watch it. 2 nothing start. Provorov and Dubois. Let's go. Second period. Oh, it's five nothing. We are gonna win. The, we are gonna win the East. It's gonna happen. Provorov. Does that pro, two, two two goals for Provorov? Okay. Tippett and Lehman, and we let up two Kachuk goals. He can't get the hat trick. Not like it would have mattered. Five two victory, and your Philadelphia Flyers are Eastern Conference champions. Oh, and Sean Couturier with a massive season. Okay, so the coaching change was a hundred percent worth it. Finding the new coach. Um, you know, this season in, 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 in acquiring players that fit, uh, Maxime Flo Maddox flood, excuse me. Um, he, yeah, he's, he's a good coach. He's a really good coach. He just had a, a bad season with us last season, but he was a good coach in Colorado. Not sure why they fired him. He gets another chance with us after taking a year out of the game. Probably was working at on TSN or something like that. Uh, but he did not have a good season last season, but he came in during a, a terrible, terrible time. Um, and this season, what a, what a year for him. So very, very quality coach there. Uh, 81 points, though, is our leading getter. As far as the standings, we'll go ahead and let's do a Stets Central recap. Um, the team looked really, really good. 107 obviously won the East uh, with that big, big push against the Senators in the last game. We would not have had a tiebreaker, so had that game gone into overtime, regardless, Ottawa would have won, but we won that one solidly in regulation. 305 goals for per game, which is okay. You can see there's some other teams up here. Um, some varying styles. Wow. Ottawa is good. Three and a half and then two, six, seven. We had a two, six, three, which is good enough for second best in the East. Um, and then our three Oh five is good enough for average in the East. That's what eighth, ninth, something like that. So I'll take it. Oh, I didn't look at the power play percentage. Uh, let's take a look at the power play percentage. Um, 
Power play percentage, 16%, not good. Definitely want to get that one higher. Uh, our penalty kill percentage at 85.3. I think this is the first time I've ever had like a really good power penalty kill. Um, but here we go. Sean Couturier, look at that. 81 points, 82 games. The best season under our GM uh, reign. He has, he's a plus nine only, so uh, he's got 22 power play points, a career high there, but five game winning goals. So the captain is definitely putting the team on his back this season. You guys can see his giveaway to takeaway ratio is absurd. He's hitting the hit, hitting uh, uh, quite a bit, and he's winning faceoffs. I mean, I can't ask for much more than a guy like Couturier. Um, 81 points there, but 68 for Konechny. Uh, Farabee with 61, so he did cool off, but the full the whole top line got in the mid-20s as far as goals, and then drew in the goal scorer on the second line. That's why we signed him. He may be a playmaker, uh, but I signed him to score goals. Uh, Frost as well with 49. That's good to see. Provorov, we'll talk about you in a second. Pierre-Luc Dubois jumping up with a 40 and a plus 14, so he's really helped out that second line. Maybe something we want to look to do. Casper Halton with 36, a minus 6, but 36 and only 63 I'm not sure when he's going to be back. He's up to an 81 now. Kevin Hayes with 34, uh, plus four in his final season with the team. Paling on the fourth line. I mean, the fourth line just did well. Bobby Brink, oof, man, that's a that's that's a tough look for Bobby Brink. Um, Bill Lehman had 100 penalty minutes. Bill, come on, buddy. Uh, 26 points, though, in his rookie season. 17 goals. I'm satisfied with it. He's listed as a depth forward. I think he's a great two-way forward. Drafted at the end of the first round, so I'll take it. Uh, taking a look at the defenseman, though, we've got Provrov with 47, uh, plus 25. Him and Korchinski. I'm surprised he outpointed Korchinski. Uh, Korchinski, the offensive defenseman, is now up to an 83. I think he's been an 83, and I say that every time. Um... But he's got 30 points. Sanheim doing so well on that second second uh, second pairing. Uh, playing with Jet Wu, who is a plus three, 11 points. I'll take it out of Jet Wu. Uh, Rasmus Ristolainen and Cam York pulled it out at the very end. Nobody is a minus on the on the blue line. Taking a look at the giveaway to takeaway ratio. Jet Wu gives the puck away way too much. Oh, my God. Um, you guys can see Cam York and Risto, not too bad. Korchinski's a little worse, but I like it because he's an offensive defenseman. He's going to be taking those chances. Sandheim with an elite giveaway to takeaway ratio, and everybody is kind of blocking shots and hitting, so we love to see it. Now we'll move on to the goaltenders. We got Carter Hart with a 920 and a 240. He's going to be out until May 4th. Just a reminder, it is April 19th, so that is two weeks away. We are likely going to be playing the first round of the playoffs without our number one elite franchise goalie. Uh, but Hunter Jones and then Logan Thompson with 4-0-1 with a shutout. That shutout we saw against Seattle was Logan Thompson playing 925 and a 216 in his very, very short stint. That is incredible. Hunter Jones definitely picked it up in the second half of the season. Take a look at the entire league now. Um, who are the best point getters? It was Nathan McKinnon, uh, Mark Shifley, Alexander Ovechkin, still killing it at the age of 40. Has he broken Gretzky's record? I believe he has at 952. Um, or is it close? I, what, what is Gretzky? Oh, frick, I, I, think, I forgot. I thought it was, uh, oh well. He just hit 800 in real life, so he's got a little ways to go. But he's at 952 right now. That's insane. Connor McDavid. Austin Matthews, uh, Rantanen, Goudreau, Pasternak. Okay, so not a ton of high points this season, and we actually had somebody close to the top uh, with our 81-point uh, Sean Couturier. As far as the goal-scoring leaders, it was Austin Matthews taking home the Richard, but Trey Com, there is the Detroit Red Wings' hope for the future. His sniper with that shooting category, that is absurd. Nathan McKinnon, uh, Hector Ford here, the sniper with a great shooting category. It's no... No uh, Trey comms, uh, but we'll take a look at the defenseman here. Who was the best defenseman? It is Adam Fox by a long shot. 14 more points than Aaron Ekblad, who's now a member of the Wild. Quinn Hughes as well up there. Tony D'Angelo, look at that. Chicago making out with Tony D'Angelo. So, you know, he had 50. Yeah, it was a good trade for them. I think I think they'll take what they got out of him. He just fits them better than he fit us. Uh, Goaltending wise, of Kap Kapanen gets the most um, uh, wins. Uh, but taking a look at save percentage, the best save percentage was Markstrom. Carter Hart maybe had a shot there. Uh, he had the best goal against average, though, uh, without a doubt, 240, 920. <sighs> I wish he was was a little bit healthier because he had 36 wins on the season for us, only three shutouts. But, man, that is one heck of a season for Carter Hart. The rookie skaters, I know we have a couple rookies. Zachary Benson is is, is the guy here. Uh, he's insane. Uh, look at just all around that playmaker is just ridiculous. Uh, Hector Ford did well, 45 goals. So, hey, 
as a rookie, uh, not too bad. But as the best team in the East, we will be facing the worst team in the East, which is the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are on, well, just on life support at this point for their cup window with the Steven Stamkos, Kucherov, um, Hedman, Vasilevsky, those guys. You know, so we'll see. Can we get past the Tampa Bay Lightning in round one without our number one goalie? Can we break them down? We'll have to find out in the next one, guys. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one. It's a free for all, free for all.